Hello, what's up guys? Uh, well here, friends again for another fight card prediction. Uh, I just want to apologise for not getting this out earlier in the week. I've not been feeling well. Since the weekend I've been really, really ill uh, and I've been really struggling. So I'm going to try and get through this as quick as I can just to get some predictions out there. Because I know I've got some messages and some emails saying I'm not doing it. And I was like, dudes, I'm just not very well. I'm not feeling great at all. So um, yeah, I'm just getting something out here for you guys. Um... And like I say, I hope you enjoy the card when it comes around. There's 15 fights, which is pretty badass. Uh, if you're new to the channel, please subscribe. And um, if you like the video, please give me a thumbs up and, and, and help me out there. But like I say, I'm going to fire through these really quickly because uh, I'm not feeling great. I've, I've been I've been rough since probably Sunday, the Saturday night, Sunday morning. So I'm not feeling great. Okay, Nathaniel Wood against John Castaneda. I've got Nathaniel Wood in that one. I think that Castaneda, I think he's tough. Got that tough kind of Mexican spirit, warrior about warrior spirit about him that he will he will fight hard. He will he's hard to kind of take out. I thought he was a little bit luckier. It's like the Jose Alway fight. Um, I I thought he was a little bit lucky kind of to lose that. I think it's a seventeen and four record, so not the worst record in the world. Coming in here short notice against Nathaniel Wood. To me, Nathaniel Wood is just a more a more superior prospect. Um, I think, I look at this fight, I'm thinking, right, where does Castaneda really win? And I was like, well, if Nathaniel Wood maybe wants to get into a brawl and he maybe gets caught with a shot, then possibly, um, then, then, then he could be in a lot of trouble. But, um, literally, I, I, I thought against John Dodson, I don't think he fought that bad. I just thought that Dodson is a hard style matchup for a lot of guys. He's got a lot of experience. He's uh, he's hard to kind of look good against, and Nathaniel Woody he got caught coming in with a big shot and got taken out, and it happens there. I think, I think Wood can take us to the ground. I think he can he can find a way to back the back. I always underestimate just how good Nathaniel Wood is, and when you look at his early fights in the UFC, he's got the fight to the ground relatively quick, and um, he takes the back and he usually finds a submission on the feet. Like I say, as long as he stays composed, doesn't get in a kind of swinging match like the kind of Josh Reed fight. Um, then then he should win this one. But I've got Nathaniel Nathaniel Wood, and I've actually got him. I've got a three man parlay in this card, and it's pretty chalky. But hopefully it'll come in. But I've got Nathaniel Wood via submission in the second round. Ramazan Amiv against Nicholas Stolz. I watch a couple of Stolz fights through the week. Like I say, um, quite big for the division, quite long. I think he's good when he moves forward, but I don't think he's good when he gets pressured back. And I think Amiv's just got far too much. Um. I think Amiv's just got far too much. I think he's going to coast in this fight. I think he could push for a finish, but Amiv doesn't seem one of those guys that's really going to push to the end to get a finish. Uh, in the fight with um, Tony Martin, he got chewed up with those leg kicks um, I, I, really, really badly, and he kind of got compromised in that spot here. Stolze, I've seen a couple of fights where he gets to the ground and he, he can control from there. I don't think he's good off his back. I think Amiv will just be a bit classier with the strike and will pressure him back against the cage. And, and win a pretty comfortable decision, probably 30 27, maybe you know, 30 26. Um, so I've got Ramazan Amiv there. Betchko here against Pani Kianzad. Um, I keep picking against Betchko here and I keep betting against her, and she keeps absolutely beating utter shit out of me. Um, it was a bad bet, me betting Sajara Eubanks. She started off okay, but then she started to flag and then Betch come in there and started to win the fight. So, um, I'm actually going to go with Betchko here because I, I, I'm, a, I'm a fan of Pani and I have been for a long time and I think she's good in a lot of areas. Um, I think she likes to clinch sometimes but I think that might be to her detriment here because Betch is quite hard to take down. She's good at getting underhooked. She's good at kind of getting herself off the cage. Um, kind of technique-wise, Pani I think is better. I think she can she can maybe keep it distance a little bit. But I think what I like about Betchka here is that she will eat some shots to get in there and, and start ripping the the body. And that's what I like about Betchka here. But like I say, she is 37. I know what I'm doing with this pick. But I, I just think like there's a lot of people on Pani Kianzad. And I, like I say, I'm a fan of Pani. But I just think that Betch has got everything in this fight to kind of really fight close. And I don't trust... If you've got the minus 110 or the plus 110, I think I've seen Pani at one point... Um, then yeah, you've got kind of dog odds, or even close to dog odds, and minus one ten, but like minus one thirty five, minus one forty, which is that. Um, I I like Betch to kind of just make this a dog fight and, and edge out a split decision win. So I'm gonna go Betch go here, 
for the win there. And I never picked Petsko here, so this is that's a weird one for me. Um, Tanner Bozer against Rafael Pessoa. I've I've bet Tanner Bozer in that parlay minus two fifty. Um, like I say, it's a chalky parlay. I've got him coming up here with a, a guy further up the card who I just think is is going to run through his opponent. But um, I, I I like what I've seen from Bozer, and I mean I bet against him last time. I thought he looked great last time. I honestly did. He looked fast. He looked sharp. He um, he, he just looked better. He looked a hell of a lot better than than what we've seen like before he went to the UFC, even in the UFC. Looked like he just looked looked a little bit quicker. He looked like um uh, he he just he just looked a lot better and I, I, that's just me being silly for beating Philip Lenz. I know I got dogman, I thought that's a pretty decent bet, but when you got starts inside the first what, 120 seconds, however much it must be. Um but he's tough. Pessoa to me he comes through, he kinda of battles a lot of um spin kicks, kind of low percentage moves that really don't land. I think that, um, I, I just think Tanner Bozer can kind of coast in this one here. As long as he doesn't do anything silly, I think he can win the rounds with these low kicks, which is something that I always kind of forget about. But then you see them, he's got really big, um, really big kind of chopping leg kicks. I quite like that. And he's been in there with better opposition than what Pessoa has. Pessoa's not great in my opinion. I don't think we'll see him around the UFC um, for a while, but Boza could turn into be a really serviceable heavyweight who I think sticks around for a very long time. Um, I, I like Boza in this one. Like I say, I've got a three man parlay Nathaniel Wood minus 300, uh, Boza minus 250, and like I say, I'll, I'll mention another guy I've got up, up in here. But we're moving, on. I'm going to pick Boza via decision. Pretty comfortable 30 27 in that one now. This one is a close fight. Movsar Evloev against Mike Grundy. I think Mike Grundy's a live underdog, but I'm a pretty big fan of Movsar Evloev. What I like about Grundy, and I've watched majority of his career, is the fact that his his hands have came all, along a long way in the, the years that I've been watching him. I I think that he's re obviously he's wrestling there. He's a was a Commonwealth Games wrestler, uh, pretty decent. Come in, got a knockout, winning his first. Um, First fight in the UFC. Oh, sorry, guys, my throat's killing me. Uh, <clears throat> so, um, yeah, Grundy, Grundy's a de definitely a live fighter. To me, Evloev is just a really... He, he reminds me not as much as Sarukian. I think Sarukian's a great, great prospect. Evloev's a little bit quiet. I don't think he's more... I think his he, striking's a little less kind of re refined than what Sarukian's is. But I think he's grappling... It's really good. His positional grappling's really good, but he's probably against one of the best grapplers he's ever ever been against in Grundy here, who's got that Greek and Roman wrestling style. It's probably hard to take down himself. I think we momentarily seen him on the ground against Nad Naramani, um, but I see this being very close. Now, if you got Mike Grundy at plus two hundred, I don't question that at all. I think that's that's good odds on a fight which I think could be relatively close. But uh, I, I've just got a feeling Evlo Wave is going to have some time against the fence, uh, maybe get a couple of momentary takedowns where he jumps back to his feet fairly quick uh, and kind of win a close fight. But like I say, if you've got the plus 200 in Grundy, I, I'm all for it. The money is coming in in Grundy a little bit. I like Evloev just a little bit more right now and I've got him via a, probably a 29-28 or a very close split decision. I think Grundy's going to run him quick, but I'm just more confident in the Evloev side here. Tom Aspinall against Jake. Collier, what a weird fight this is. I don't really rate Tom Aspinall all that that much. I think he's fought absolute nobodies. Um like literally nobodies. I was watching his fights and obviously I know him through Cage Warrior, so I've, I've watched his last kind of recent fights, but then you go back and watch his old fights, I'm just like, oh my god, this guy's fighting absolute nobodies who are who are just slinging everything and coming and getting taken out. But like I say, Aspinall he's had a couple of kind of these last two fights he's fought French guys where um, he snapped the leg on him, he checked a beautiful leg kick and snapped that guy's leg, and then he beat a guy who was like, I think he was 2-1 and one at the time. And I mean, Jake Collier, I did not think this guy was still in the UFC, so this surprised me. And he got popped by USADA as well, a formal middleweight who's moved up to heavyweight. Um, he's, he's had a couple of half-decent fights in the UFC, but that was 3-4 years ago, so who knows what he's going to look like at, at uh, heavyweight here. Tom Aspinall should win. I, like I, said, I don't rate Tom Aspinall all that highly. I think he's got a lot of the the kind of uh, hype off Darren Till. And obviously his performances, if you're knocking guys out in the first round, you're going to get a lot of hype. But uh, I think I'll be looking forward to 
uh, really kind of fading him going forward in matchups. So I wouldn't mind him coming out here and getting a first round knockout. So the odds are a little bit better next time out, depending on the matchup he gets. I'm going to take Tom Aspinall, but I hope Jake Collier can kind of push him here because, um, uh, like I say, it's, it's hard to pick a guy that's kind of been off that long who was a former middleweight against a guy in Aspinall who's got a nice one too. It's fairly quick and has power. So we should smash him up pretty convincingly here. So I've got Tom Aspinall, a first round knockout, but. I'm looking at fading this guy going forward. So, Aspinall for the win there. Nicholas Dalby against Jesse Ronson. Uh, yeah, this this one I thought was closer, or was going to be closer. And then I kind of looked into it and I'm thinking, I think Dalby's just a little bit too gritty for Jesse Ronson. And that's kind of a little maybe a little bit off in seeing that because Jesse Ronson's been around for a long time. He's fought a lot of good, lot of good guys. He's obviously his second stint in the UFC. He's came through the PFL. Um, he's lost to a couple of good fighters in um, Alexican and uh, Nathan Schulter. But you, you look at his kind of wins outside of that, like in his recent kind of wins, through coming through TKO, there's nothing to really write home about. And he is an undersized kind of welterweight. He is smaller, but obviously... He's had troubles kind of making the 155 weight division before. But uh, dangerous with his striking, have to be very, very careful there. I think that Dalby can be a fighter here who can uh, mix up a little bit. He's he kind of got that kickboxing background, but he kind of uses it to get his takedowns and, and kind of get top position, kind of like what he did against Alex Oliveira. Uh, and I think that's what he does here. I think that he just outworks JC Ronson across the 15 minutes a little bit and wins a pretty comprehensive decision. So I've got Nicholas Dalby there. But JC Ronson... Might be a little bit of a punt for me on, on DraftKings. I might take a little bit. Um, I might take a little bit of shot on JC Ronson just in case he can pull something out, but it might not be the best pick. Francisco Trinaldo against Jai Herbert. Uh, initially, I was on Jai Herbert, um, but now I'm on Trinaldo. I, I like Trinaldo in this matchup. I mean, I, I, Herbert's got a lot that I, I do like. He's he's got some decent decent speed with his hands, good striking, good in the clinch. There's some things I don't like. I've seen him taken to his back. I've seen him knocked out. Pretty um, devastating by a guy up next in Reese McKee. Um, but he's came through. In the last two years, he, he looks like he's really turned a corner, in my opinion, with, with his skill set, with his confidence, uh, and got himself into the UFC. But this is a horrible fight to enter the UFC, especially in the lightweight division. There are so many good fighters in this one, hard-nosed, tough fighters, and Trinaldo is right up up there in my opinion. And I know he's old. He is very, very old. And he's he's outside of Brazil, which is never great for Trinaldo. Every time he seems to kind of go out of Brazil, he really um, loses loses fights out of that. But he, he's a hard kickboxer. He's got some wrestling there. That's where I think he can win this fight. The money is coming in Jai Herbert. So... If this money keeps coming in, I actually like the minus 140 where it's at right now. That's something that appeals to me is Trinaldo. And like I said, I was on Herbert, but I think that Trinaldo is just a little bit more grittier in this this spot. I think he can take the fight to the ground. I think he can have time up there, uh, on on top there, but he has to be careful on the feet. But Trinaldo's no doozy on the the ground I uh, the feet either he he slings a lot of hard body kicks low kicks uh, he's a hard guy to get out of there and Jai Herbert this guy's going to be in your face kind of non-stop so uh, I've seen a lot of people on Jai Herbert I can see why because he is fast and he's got some decent striking and dangerous in the clinch but I'm going to take old man Trinaldo to come through again 29-28 I think it could be a little bit close but I, I like Trinaldo to kind of pull through here and, and get a a good win over a, a decent fight in Jai Herbert so, uh, Kamzat Chimaev against Reese McKee. You're not going to find me picking against Chimaev, who looks like he is going to be a serious, serious fighter at 170. Uh, second fight in 10 days. Did what he had to do against John Phillips. You know, if you're fighting John Phillips, the one thing that you've got to do is take this fight to the ground. And he did that um, and just dominated um, John Phillips down there. He looks good. He looks a, a really good pro. I heard about this guy before he quit the UFC, but until you really see him in the UFC and getting caliber opponents that he should be fighting, I, I, I think he, I, I hate to say this, but I think he, he really kind of beats up Reese McKee here. Reese McKee is a guy I've actually liked watching come through the, the Irish and, and British scene, won titles at um, in Bama. 
didn't like the Terry Brazer fight where he got taken down a lot there and then you've got a guy in Chimaev who likes to take the fight to the ground and dominate through that um, he's got decent striking good technical striking long but he's not like a, like a one punch knockout kind of guy he did do it to Joy Herbert but he's more kind of accumulation of strikes to get you out of there uh, I think he, like I said I've seen him taken down one too many times I bet um, Hamza at the minus 500 and I bet him obviously with Boza and Nathaniel Wood for plus 124. Now he's minus, what, 1250? So, yeah. Uh, Chimaev should should have a kind of easy path to victory here. But he might want to show us his striking. Because that's something he never got to do. And obviously Phillips is a lot more dangerous, I think, than McKee. Um, so it might be a spot here where Chimaev looks to try and show some of his striking. But ultimately, once he gets his fight to the ground, I think he'll, he'll run... He'll run through Reese McKee a little bit and get the submission. So I've got uh, Chumayev inside the first two rounds. Um, Alex Oliveira against uh, Peter Sabota. I've got Peter Sabota here, and I'm a big. I'm actually a big admirer of Alex Oliveira, but I I, I think this. I mean, some of the things I'm watching and reading. He's got like ten kids and. He's like he's trying to get more ladies and stuff like that, and he's not in the gym as much. I've I've heard him say that myself, in an interview that I watched, and he he needs that fifty thousand pounds for his ten kids. So, um, like I say, I've been on Alex Oliver and I've been betting him recently, and people have been coming up to me when I've been betting. I'm thinking that's not a good bet like against Max Griffin. And I was like, I just think he's gritty and he's tougher than Max Griffin. He can go harder. Support to me is a guy I always kind of underestimate a little bit. I always think he's not as good as he actually is. And I actually think he's pretty solid as a fighter. Really good ground game. A good black belt under Dean Lister. Good top control. Striking, he can get hit a little bit. And Oliveira is long. He's dangerous. He's very, he hits very hard. But I don't think he's good off his back. And we've seen that in spots in the, in the past. And if Sabota can get a trip or get this fight to the ground, I think he can have control time over Alex Oliveira down there. So that's kind of where I'm seeing that. I'm probably going to end up betting Peter Sabota if I'm picking him as a, a decent sized dog. He's plus 150 in the UK. I wouldn't mind seeing that line kind of go up a little bit. Um, but I'm probably going to take a, a shot on Peter Sabota and bet him in this way. I, I think this has got a, a decent chance of hopefully cashing. Um, like I said, I love Oliveira, but uh, I'm going to pick Sabota for the win in that one. There. I'm going to pick him via uh, submission, actually. I think he maybe catches some in the submission. Light heavyweight division, we've got the Bear Jew, Paul Craig against Gadzi Murad and Tegulov. I cannot get a good read in this fight because I feel that Antigulov's kind of sub or bust a little bit. And Craig's, I know for a, for a fact, and it's not hard to see, that his best skill set is he's, he's kind of he's submission grappling. And that's everything... Um, he's told me that numerous times. Like, if he can get the fight to the ground, it doesn't matter if he's on his back. It doesn't matter if he if if he's in a bad position. He will work, and he feels like he'll not get submitted in there. And that stand out. He has been submitted in the UFC through that, but he's pulled out some big wins by being on the ground. Um, and Gadzimura Antigulov is a guy that, like you say, he's shown, and he's got a lot of sub wins in his record that he is kind of sub or bust. Um, and he's a guy that kind of pulls out a fight, so I'm surprised we're actually going to see him fighting here. Um, and th you look at his wins, Peugeot de Lima, Joachim Christensen in the first round, being taken out in the first round. I think <laughs> I think um, that if he doesn't... I just wish he'd fight a little bit more safer and not go kind of gung-ho straight away and get taken out because that seems to be what happened with him. Like I said, I, I, I think that Paul Craig can be hit. I think that... Um, Anti I, I, I'm going to pick Andy Gulov. Um, I've been I've, I've been trying to push myself to pick Paul Craig, but it's like I don't feel him in this spot. I think if it goes past seven eight minutes, I think he's got a good chance of winning. And he's striking as something that's come on, but he will go. He's grappling if he gets the opportunity. He wants to. He wants to take this fight to to the ground with with Andy Gulov, and I think that might kind of play into his detriment. I think he might get caught, but it wouldn't surprise me if the Bear Jew pulls a uh, Bear Jew pulls out a sub. But uh, hopefully Paul wins. Obviously he's Scottish. Um, but I'm just going to take Ante Gulov um, on this. But like I say, there's passes. Uh, Jonathan's just saying there. Um, yeah, this fight to me is a pass. But I'm going to take Ante Gulov via submission round one. I think he catches him with something. Carlos Spars against Marina Rodriguez. I like Rodriguez pretty heavily in this one. Um, 
yeah. Well, I don't like a handly because the times that you see her taken down, she's a little bit bad off her back. The last few fights, I've seen her kind of frame off a little bit and get back to her feet on a couple of occasions. But the rounds that we've seen her lose in the UFC, she's been taken down and she's got nothing off her back. And that's a little bit of concern. And those rounds that she's losing, she's actually losing 10 h If you go back on online, have a look, you will see that she loses 10-8 rounds and that's never good and against someone like Esparza who obviously comes from a wrestling background. Her striking's not great, but it's it's serviceable in the UFC. Um, but I think Marina Rodriguez is a problem for a lot of strawweights. If she can shoot up that takedown defence, her striking is deadly, very accurate, very fast, very powerful. Uh, and I like what I see there. I wish the line would come down a little bit. It's minus 163 in the UK here. If it got down to minus 150, I'd probably put a play on that. Um, I think, and this is maybe a bad fight to kind of go back considering it was years ago, but the Njacek fight where if she gets pressured and there's a lot of strikes coming from the opposition like Rodriguez can throw, and I think she throws a lot more damage and strikes with elbows and knees and so on that she could hurt Carla. And I think that Carla, she dives in for double legs uh, if she gets them, or she gets this one here, I think that she could maybe get a little bit of time, um, top time on there. But hopefully Rodriguez has started to make some improvements and not get taken to the ground. For me, Esparza has to wrestle, wrestle her ass off in this one. If she doesn't, she's gonna, she's gonna lose this fight in my opinion. So I've got Marina Rodriguez. Sorry guys, uh, Marina Rodriguez. Uh, via TKO, I think she knocks her out in the third round. Fabrizio Verdum against Alexander Gustafsson. Oh man, I would love to take a shot in Verdum, but that last fight against Olnick just put me off so much. And he looked out of shape, he looked so tubby, he didn't look good at all. Um, and I, I did not expect that fight to go three rounds, first of all. And I did not expect to see Alexander Gustafsson come back, first of all. And then fight a bit heavy, but I think this is might be a good spot for him in this fight here. Like I said, I'd like to be confident for Doom because I think he can maybe get some takedowns and we have seen Alexander Gustafsson recently kind of taken down a little bit. Um but for Doom if he gets the fight to the ground, which we've seen him do on occasions, he can definitely maybe keep the fight there and have a little bit of um top time and he's always going to be dangerous with that jiu jitsu. On the feet you've got Gustafsson very light, very bouncy on his feet will throw out um, some nice crisp striking and I think that the pace will ultimately kind of wear on Verdum a little bit when he realises he cannot get um, takedowns. So I'm going to take Gustafsson. I think this is going to be a, a pretty... I don't want to say one... It's hard to say one... I'm thinking one-sided, but I'm thinking Gustafsson's coming back. He's he's older now. Verdum, he has to... He can't be as bad as he was last fight because he looked terrible. Yeah, I'm going to take Gustafsson via decision. Shogun's up next, Mauricio Hua against Little Nog, Antonio Rogerio Nogueira, this is the third fight, I remember the first fight in 2005, I remember watching it when I was a sprightly 20 year old, um, and then obviously I watched the rematch where uh, Shogun came out, was really kind of dictating the pace, was landing some nice body kicks, some body strikes, then ultimately got hit with a shot, uh, and really had to survive the first round, second round, he decided, right, I'd, I have to be careful of the boxing in Nogueira, which is his biggest weapon, and took the fight to the ground. Nogueira did well to get back to his feet on a few occasions, but who I knew how to kind of take that fight to the ground and kind of win out through that. I don't see this fight being a hell of a lot different. Um, Nogueira's come out and pretty much said this is his kind of last fight that he's going to have. He probably wants to retire, so it's a good one to go out if he if he can beat Shogun. But uh, to me, I think Shogun, even though Shogun looked, he looked... He didn't look great in that first round against Paul Craig. I thought Paul Craig was going to really get him out of there. But this guy, in my opinion, is one of the most ultimate legends that we have in the sport. But he's old now. I think he's teamed up with Rafael Cordero again, which is nice. Because they two guys had a little bit of a spat. Um, and we're going a little bit back and forward. But now that they seem back together, I've seen a couple of pictures with him there. So that's nice. I've got uh, Shogun here. I think he will eat a few decent strikes. But I think ultimately he'll end up coming out winning the decision so Shogun for the win there and the main event of the night <clears throat> sorry guys oh I don't feel great at all oh eh uh, 
Robert, Robert the Re Reaper Whitaker against Darren Till. Two guys I really like a lot, but I'm a big fan of Robert Whitaker and I like him in this spot here. Um, Darren Till, to me, just... He doesn't... Uh, it's hard to say. I was going to say he doesn't do enough. But he seems to get the judges' decision. So, he, I, he, like, he didn't do a hell of a lot against Gastelum. He didn't do a hell of a lot against Wonderboy. But he seems to just nip these little little fights together where, where, he, where he seems to win close decisions and I mean that was a big fight for him against Gaslam because obviously he was showing a lot of emotion afterwards there was a lot of pressure on himself um, and then you've got Whitaker who's coming back um, you've got Whitaker coming back after a couple of really devastating well, a devastating personal thing devastating in the cage where he just got beat by an absolute crisp crisp striker in Israel Adesanya and Darren Till has some of that about him but um, I don't think he's as deadly as what Israel Adesanya is I think if you come in a little bit too much and Robert Werker is known for maybe be coming in and bull rushing a little bit and maybe being open to a shot but I think he's probably definitely worked on that he realises that he can I mean I saw a picture of him at the face to face and I thought Till would have been a little bit bigger but um Whitaker was actually he looked bigger than Till was so that surprised me. I'm gonna come out and say I'm I'm picking Robert Whitaker. I think that um I know that he's taken a lot of damage in his fights, I know he's lost his belt, I know maybe the motivation isn't there. To me he looks like to, to me what what he's sounding looking like all the pressure's kinda of off him. He's back in when he first came into that division where um he was striving for the belt. He looks like he's got that here. Um, Till to me he just doesn't throw enough he's deadly, he's got a lot of good striking obviously, he's, he's got some nice knockouts in his record, but we've seen him knocked out as well, I think Whitaker can absolutely knock him out, I've bet Robert Whitaker at minus 110, I like that number, I was hoping we could get, I could get plus money, but it really wasn't going to work, uh, when I realised it was starting to move in America, I was like right, I need to go on Whitaker now, so a couple of units on Robert Whitaker um I actually think he can knock him out in the later parts of the fight, but I think that Till's not going to throw that much offense. I think Whitaker's just going to throw more. I think he can mix in uh, some takedowns if he needs to. Whitaker just needs to be careful he doesn't get overly aggressive because if he does, um, Darren Till could absolutely catch him with something. He's got some big power. He frames off well, throws some nice straight shots, um, and he can attack you from all kind of varying angles as well. So I, I, I'm not... Um, I, I'm pretty. I'm seventy five percent sure that Whitaker's gonna kind of win this fight. I think that if he puts it all together, I just to me personally, I think he's a a better fighter than Dan Till. But I think if he was to mix it up, I would be a lot more, a lot more confident. But uh, yeah, I'm I'm taking Robert Whitaker. I think he's got a decent chance to win this fight. And I'm pretty confident that he can pull through. So, uh, guys, I appreciate you for sticking with me because, like I said, I don't feel great at all. Um, I'll be back next week. Someone just said in the chat there, Subay's in against Derek Brunson. It's your main event, three-round main event, which is going to be a good main event. I think it's a better main event than Aldana home, but uh, I'll get that out on Monday, hopefully. I'll be feeling better, a lot better by then. I'm I'm, I'm, I'm slowly getting there, uh, but I thought I had to get a video out for you guys who are messaging me, and um, I felt that, um, like I say, I, I can't miss a fight card for you guys. So enjoy the card when it comes around this week. All the very, very best. Hope your bets cash. Uh, give me a thumbs up if you can if you're new to the channel please hit that sub button i'm on that mission to 4,000 subs by the end of 2020 hopefully you can help me all the best and enjoy the fights peace